this is one of the videos that will actually be looking at some of the complex report related functions that are being phased out slowly by slowly but they haven't fully been phased out and especially in the rdlc reports because uh, of course definitely if you look at uh, microsoft's path the path is tending towards word reports because word reports are easier to maintain using the default uh, maintained and well robust microsoft word that has been working over and over again so it makes it easier for you to work with microsoft word but if you look at for example this return order confirmation in just one of the base application report if you go to the sales return order the return order confirmation still has those old legacy ways of doing things in rdlc and why why should we look at it yes in this day and age when we need to look at microsoft word when we are tending to move towards the latest technologies remember sometimes you get you find yourself in a situation where you need to support such a report you need maybe to extend it or create a copy of the same report by maybe going to this report layouts downloading it again and being able to upload it back with a different a view or different other functionalities so and funny enough when you look at such of course they are moving slowly in terms of being able to update reports like when you look at the return order confirmation it only has one layout and it's unlike microsoft with most of the reports which are already having many uh, word layouts already defined predefined in the report <laughs> and the key thing here of of key importance or what we are trying to look at today here is um the get data and set data that is actually found in the reports and so what i've done is in this uh, sales return order i've gone to the report layout and i have downloaded <coughs> this particular default report so when you click on this you're able to export the layout or that is just like downloading it so when we export this layout funny enough so when you go to this um uh, values for example this expression you will find that the expression is what it is code.getData11 so the first time ever i found this pattern in rdlc it was a nightmare because you don't understand what it is you're just seeing that there's code.get data but at the same time when you go and preview the report you find there is a result then you're wondering wait where is this result coming from where is this data being gotten and you can clearly see that in the data set of the report everything has been set up you can see there is a bill to customer number every field has been set up and just to exaggerate this report i've added repeatedly many many uh, items to just simulate why why this get data thing has always been used and according to the documentation and mostly of course you'll find it in all documentation uh for this blog was written back in when was it you can see it is 2011 that is like over 10 years ago this same one also in 2011 again and there's a pattern here when they're saying why the set data is used and and the reason is the reason is uh not because of performance related um so if you're printing multiple form types like sales order you need set data and get data the header will only link to the lines displayed on the first page of the report so this means your sales order is printed to the second page the header information will always disappear so when you look at this you're like mm, okay when i try using the header in reality i clearly can see that the set data and get data with the current way of writing reports you can still get that information and i still don't get why this set data and get data was used in a report to give the uh, the repeated headers or dynamic to create dynamic headers in a way that if you have many data items the header part of the report will be repeated so it's so legacy but you still find it in business central the current version of business central this is version 26 with this same pattern so what happens when you need to customize this report so the first thing this is um there is usually a report property here with the code so there is a blank this code um you can create code for custom code for this report 
and it is done in surprisingly visual basics which is a language for me i have i can clearly say that i have never used i know there are people who have used it and it could be easier for them so this is an extra custom fu function and you can see how the function in vb was dis defined there is no semicolon or anything but you are setting the data from this side you're setting the data from this side then on this other side when you look at the get data how are you getting the data the data you're getting it from the other side of you're getting the data from still the same uh, vb custom function code you still be you're still able to get uh, the data and you can say if group is one then and all that so ideally this is where it's sitting so when you're calling this set data and get data then you're actually referring or defining those visual basic functions that's what is going on in this all like uh, these all things but where is the magic happening the real the reality so this is something that i've added that is ref referencing just a normal field to dispute why we still need the set data and get data but if you ever find yourself in a report most of the time in the table in the detail table um you will always find a field that is using the set data and get data why why they are doing this is apparently also that the header of a report if you for example uh this is the header that i've removed so this all this is part of the report header so the report header is run once at the beginning of the report and subsequently the body is run up to is run multiple times until all the data items have been displayed similarly the footer is also run once at the end towards the end of the report so the set data will ideally sit somewhere here okay so when you look at this you it's usually a hard find and uh, you know some complications really okay let's just get it when you look keenly here you can see that we have some some like text boxes this is text box 27 but inside here there is a text box known as new page but if i go right on the side of the same text box there is a text box known as header info and if i'm to go down in the hidden property of this text box header info you can see there's a lot of data being set from here so if i copy okay this is the all the information is here so if i go to the expression this is the expression when i click on the expression this is where the data is being sent set so you are setting the data with a character and the position and ideally if i copy paste this information to excel it can clearly show me now how all this thing is coming to so i'm setting data for the company uh, information i'm setting the data for uh what is it the address setting the data for the address so this one will be one two three four five six and all that so five one two and all that so this is the information for the header info and you can find this another text box for the footer info that you need to identify where the data has been set copy it paste it to excel and be able to now trace it where it's coming from but this one has ideally been just reduced to i can only see the one so we don't have two so for th up to 35 we should have like 35 rows yeah more than 35 we have 44 so all of them have been set in that hidden text box like all this information is being done from here and then now you need to identify what do i need to change or to add i need the bank name caption so where that should be number 30 and then you're like hmm so go back to the display of the report where is the bank name being displayed and then i uh, figuratively be able to see that this one the proximity of this is somewhere near the bank name or uh, uh or the bank name caption there and you're able to change it or be able to update it not for any performance reasons and for me i have tried to understand why it was used at that time or when it was getting used um and uh, i've never actually understood and anytime i find this 
uh, pattern that's when I'm like wait this thing is still getting used and why why is it is it used so if you ever find yourself in a need of being able on a need to modify the report for any reason then this this guide at least can help you be able to to sort out your clients um, look keenly for where the field has been hidden the hidden and go to the properties copy that text paste it in excel or word and number it and be able now to see the number that you are, your that particular number where your information is contained very manual and you'll be able to to get the result and if you you are how did i identify that this is the header text info so you can open your rdlc in excel and the only way when you open it in excel always they have like a character what is this called the character um, uh this this function for the character and um, i don't remember what character one for 177 means but it should be representing either space or something so when it's appending this um uh this should be a concatenate string or something for the vb code but if you look at this character 177 you can be able to search with it and you'll be able to see or when you get to this code.set data you can see the name of the text box and it can guide you so you can see the text box name here when you open this RDS, rdlc file in your favorite text editor you can see that the name of the text box is header info you see you are seeing that the head the name is header info and it has this so if i search for any other thing do i have if i go for code.set data you can see we, we are only having one but the get data is everywhere with the several uh, places where it has been used this is also another way of of being able to identify like uh, get data is buy from vendor num uh, buy from address based on the text box name an easier way is to actually display this rdlc file open it in your favorite text editor that most likely visual studio code since you this is the one that we ideally will be using and then you can now be able to to change or identify where this information has been set it's legacy but remember sometimes the solution is what matters you need to create a solution for the client and solve their problem so why not understand where and how this one is getting used so let me know how you or why this set data and get data is here for whichever reason and and if you have any comment maybe just just tell me if you use it <laughs> currently for your reports why do you use it or um of course it, it's not readable it's just very legacy but understand how to navigate through it in case you need to maintain code that has legacy information like this so thank you i'll see you in the next video if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one